All right, well, we have something special for you today on the Daily Plus Live. It is a look at our new streaming series called First Person, and it's where someone who has been in the middle of a historic or an iconic moment, and they tell their story around it. So today, you're going to be hearing from Mary Schroeder. Now, you might not recognize her name, but she has been a sports photojournalist for almost 40 years. And yes, she took that picture of Kirk Gibson after his home run in the 1984 World Series. If you are from Michigan, you know that photo. And so we talked to Mary, and she tells the story in her own words about that moment. Take a look. My name is Mary Schrader, and I was a photographer and picture editor for the Detroit Free Press for almost 40 years. I started taking pictures when I was nine years old because it was a sense of discovery. And I liked to draw, but I was bad at it. But I loved the arts. So taking pictures married both professions together. And I knew then what I was going to do. I grew up in Manitowoc, Wisconsin, and I went to school at Ohio University because of their photo program. Senior year, my professors, they knew I had the skills, but I wasn't totally refined at that point. So they offered me a full ride scholarship for the graduate program. So I needed an internship. And Tony Spina, legendary chief photographer for the Free Press, offered me the internship. And he had three questions for me. He said, do you have a car? Yes. Do you have cameras? Yes. Do you like Detroit? Yes, even though I've never been here. And he said, you've got the job. Three weeks in to my internship, Tony Spina sends me to Metro Airport because Mother Teresa is coming in. And so I photograph her and then I ask her, can I go with you to your um, convent that you're going to be opening? And so it was at 12th Street and the boulevard where the riots were. And I have pictures of her opening the convent of her praying. So that's how I began my internship. A month to the day I began my internship, Tony offers me a full-time job. And I say, goodbye, Ohio University. I now love Detroit. Along the way, I started photographing sports because I liked the fast pace of it and I was just drawn to it. I would walk into a room and there'd be 40 guys. And so everybody knew who Mary was. So you use it to your advantage. And you were always respectful and you never slept with any of the guys, ever. You never dated any of the guys. It was fine. My work spoke for it. And because of the work, then it opened avenues. I was named sports photographer in 1983. And that meant covering spring training for the Tigers. The paper sent me to Chicago to cover the White Sox for their home opener. And Morris, Jack Morris, tosses a no-hitter. And that was the beginning of their 35 and five going forward. And there was just something magical. They never looked back. Nobody could catch them. And with their season going along, it was like they were headed to the World Series. It's the fifth game and they're playing the San Diego Padres. And it's like, They've lost one game out of the series. And if they win tonight, we don't go back to San Diego. And I'm praying, just clinch it here because it's going to be so much more of a celebration. We don't have to worry about transmitting and deadlines and all this other stuff. Kirk Gibson hits a homer in the first inning. And when he rounds the bases, he his the way he 
high fives, the bat boy, it's like wham, just with all the enthusiasm as possible and just going. And I'm on the third base side. I'm on the field and I'm the third photographer from, I'm between home plate and the dugout. The third photographer down. I really can't see that much into the dugout, but somewhat. And then come the eighth inning, Gibson is gonna be up. And logic would dictate that they would walk Gibson to get to Parrish, uh, because they could get Parrish out. But Goose Gossage says, no, I want to, to toss to this guy, to Kurt, because I think I can get him out. Well, with his Fu Manchu mustache, he just stares him down. And, and sure enough, Gibson hits a home run. And he's rounding the bases. He, he's got his arm up in the air. And I turn my camera vertically. I don't know why, but I do. This is film, and this is manual focus. I'm with a Canon and a 200 millimeter lens, and I get him, and there are three frames of him leaping, and it's real quick, and his toes are cut off in the frame, and so three frames. I send the film back to the paper. We had runners, and then I go into the locker room, get all those pictures, come back on the field, get those, and then like three or four in the morning, I go back to the paper and I see the front page that they produced. We had never in the history of the paper had a singular topic for page one. Gene Myers, an upstart 24 year old assistant sports editor told the executive editor that they were going to have the, all the celebration and run it three or four columns on page one. And so he was, he was going to be, yes, then I get the Gibson picture to myself because he's gonna run it four and a half columns on the front and of, of the sports section and just have one story down the side because he recognizes the how important that this picture was to the celebration. Because of Gibson's emotion, he's the heart and soul of the team, he's a catalyst, he doesn't take no for an answer, and he just, he's got the football mentality. L look at his shins, all torn up and all full of mud. They're in a small room around a small TV set because they could see all the images. So the publisher, the managing editor, and all the, and everybody in God is in that room. And then Dave Lawrence, the publisher said, no, that's how we're gonna do page one. You don't get it in sports. So that's how it ended up on page one. And we had the headline of great for the first one but then it come realized somebody died. So they changed the headline to We Win. And there was a big Ford UAW deal. And somebody said, well, we're just gonna run it a banner across the top. This is historic and let's treat it as that, as thus we can run a normal page any other time. The next day, the paper sold out. And then we decided to produce a poster and there were 100,000 of those produced, and then a book. The very next day, the publisher calls me in, and I got a $250 bonus. That's all I made from the picture. Sports Illustrated, Associated Press, United Press International, all the big wig photographers from out of town, all these honcho sports guys. I'm the only woman on the field. Mind you, I'm 26 years old, and it, none of the boys got it. UPI transmitted 
They got them from the waist up. They all missed it. How can I, I can't help it that at times I'm better than all of them. And it's also how we played the picture, that we knew how to do it. In covering Kirk Gibson, he was always good for me. I would always ask him a question uh, and I always tell him, these are the pictures that I want because they were always something special. One time I wanted a picture with two other players and so I took 15 bats and I put them together with wire and made them as a stand where one guy leaned on them. And all the guys always say when I wanted to do something special, they always say, yes, Mary, when? And you couldn't ask, and they always got prints. Whenever anything I did that, they always got prints. A good photograph has one idea. Don't tell me, oh, there's all this other stuff going on, of there's two ideas, three ideas. It's simple and clean and not a distracting background and good light, but one idea. I will be forever remembered for that picture. Gibson and I will be tied together. I don't think either one of us realized at how big it was going to be, ever. It's just a good picture, and good pictures will always live. Thank <laughs> you.